Hi there, this is Mr Cawthorn from Romarsh Community School and I'm really excited to welcome you and introduce you to the Science Department. Um, I'm going to take you through the staff at Romarsh and also the type of things that you'll be doing when you join us in Year 7. So to start off with, we'll introduce you to the staff. My name is Mr Cawthorn and I'm the Head of Science. We also have Mr Morley, who's the Head of Chemistry. We've got Miss Drew, Mr Conley, Miss Harrison and Mr Stanley, who's the Head of Physics. We also have Miss Paget, Mr Green, Mrs Hazard, Mr Ali and Mr Ellis. And when you start at Romarsh with us, you will have one science teacher that will take you for two lessons per week. Now, it's going to be quite different when you do science at Romarsh Community School compared to your primary school, as we start to look in science in a little bit more depth. One of the first differences you'll see is that we split science up into three groups which are biology, chemistry and physics. And I'll just take you through what each one of those are. So in biology, we'll start off by looking at cells and tissue, the things that we are made of. And that means we'll be using microscopes to look at cells from animals and plants. We'll then start to look at specialised cells and how cells are adapted to do specific roles. And this will introduce us onto certain types of cells when cells come together and reproduction occurs and we get new life formed. We'll look at reproduction in animals and plants and then we'll look on a little bit further at how our body works when we look at our muscles and skeletal system and we look at how we move. Now in chemistry what we'll be looking at mainly is particles and matter, the things that things are made of. We'll also start to look at chemical reactions and we'll spend some time looking at acids and alkalis. And from the pictures you can see there we can see some chemical reactions happening. And we might notice that for these chemical reactions, we often get things like a colour change, a gas given off, a new product being formed, or even a large change in temperature. And that's one of the, the, the key elements of uh, a chemical reaction, is those four things occurring. And then the last part of science is physics. And in physics, we tend to look at objects, forces, energy, and space in the solar system. So we'll be looking how forces interact with each other to bring about movement, so how gravity and air resistance might work together to change the speed of a skydiver. We'll look at different types of energy and the way that we can transfer energy from one place to another, and also how we can transform energy from one type to another so it's more useful. And when we look at space in the solar system, we'll be looking at the Earth and where the Earth sits within the solar system, and we'll also be looking at things like seasons, days and nights, and why we have different phases of the moon. One of the biggest changes that you'll see in science in Year 7 is the amount of practical work that you'll complete. So you'll do science in labs, and the labs are all fully equipped with all of the equipment that you'd expect. And you'll be designing and conducting experiments, you'll be recording observations, and most importantly, you'll be learning to work safely and collaboratively with the people around you. There's lots and lots of new equipment to learn to use, but we'll introduce you to it slowly. And when you're ready to use it, you'll be able to use it independently. One of the questions we get asked a lot is when can we start to use Bunsen burners? And the answer to that is as soon as you are safe to do so. So as you can see, there's lots of equipment on the board there. And most of that you will be using within your first year. Some of the other things that are available in science are Science Club, and that runs each week. And Science Club allows us to be a little bit more creative when it comes to science, a little bit more hands-on. Each time we run Science Club, there will be a project where you get a chance to look at a, a, something that's happening. You will get a chance to design a solution for that and then make that solution. So you might be making slime, or you might be throwing eggs out of windows and designing a way to stop the egg from breaking when it hits the ground. We're also keen to be uh, engaged in STEM projects, and that's where we link up science, technology, engineering and maths. And this year our Year 7 students were able to design and make a speaker for their phones. You might be involved in recycling waste into making new products, or even participating in some citizen science projects where we use uh, information and data we collect from experiments and feed that into projects being run by universities. Here's an example of a starter activity we might have in a typical biology lesson. So we've got on their board there, we've got tuna fish, 
we've got seahorse, hammerhead shark and beluga whale. And what I'm asking you to do is pick an odd one out. So have a look at those animals and decide which one you think is the odd one out. But before you do, make sure you've got a reason for your choice. So I'll just give you five seconds to think about which one is the odd one out. Now, before we reveal the answers, just want to give you some more information. Animals generally fall into two categories, those with a spine and those without a spine. And the ones with a spine we call vertebrates. And on the board, all the animals are vertebrates. And vertebrates fall into one of five categories. Mammals, reptiles, fish, amphibians and birds. And I'm saying that one of those on the board there is not a fish. So we've already chosen our odd one out and now we need to pick out which one is not a fish. I'll give you five seconds to think about it. Okay, so looking at the board, we'll go through them one by one. So we can see from that that a tuna is definitely a fish. It has gills, it can breathe underwater, and it lays soft eggs. The hammerhead shark next, that is a fish. Again, it has gills and can breathe underwater, which makes it a fish. The seahorse, that is a fish. So that one might not look like the others, but it still has those properties that make it a fish. It has the gills and it can breathe underwater. So that leaves us with our beluga whale. So that means the beluga whale is not a fish and it is a mammal. So a beluga whale may look like a fish. However, because it produces milk and it gives birth to live young, it means it's a mammal. And we can see from that that a beluga whale is actually more closely related to a cow than it is to a tuna, a hammerhead shark or a seahorse. The type of starter that you might get in a chemistry lesson, it could be doing with this. So we've got four things happening on the board there. We've got charcoal burning like you might have in a barbecue. We've got sugar being dissolved in a glass of warm water. We've got an egg cooking and we've got an ice cube melting. And two of those are chemical changes, and two of those are physical changes. Now, for those of you who listened carefully at the start, you will realise that I spoke about what a chemical change was. So let's just have a think. I'll give you five seconds to think which two are chemical changes, and which two are physical changes. Okay, so we'll take them one by one. We've got the coals burning. We've got a lot of heat given off and we've got a new product being formed so the coal is going to be turning into ash and it'd be very very difficult to return re reverse that so that means that that is a chemical change then we've got the glucose sugar being dissolved in the water and we've got there something which is a physical change it'd be very easy to turn that back we won't have a huge change in temperature we won't have a change in color or a gas given off so that's going to be a physical change the ice cube, I think that one's quite easy, that's a physical change. So we've got ice melt into water, it's all water still, and it's very easy to reverse that. We just collect the water back up, pop it into an ice cube tray, pop that into the freezer, and we've got ice again. And then the egg cooking, that is going to be a chemical change. So if you think about when we crack the egg in, you'd have the yolk and we'd have the clear, coolest part around the outside. And as it cooks, that colourless part will turn white, so we have the colour change. It would also be practically impossible to turn that cooked egg back into a raw egg. So that means that it's going to be a chemical change. Okay, so one of the questions we get asked about is, how do we prepare for science lessons in Year 7? And I think the most important thing we can do is just think about what science is. And we see there we've got some words related to science and the most important one there is experiments and the next one that i put on there would be evidence so experiments allow us to see evidence and what we do in science is we ask questions about the world around us and then we look for evidence to see whether we can work out the answers to the problems we have and it's a little bit like that with you guys so look at the world around you Find out things that you don't know and ask yourself why those happen. And then when you come to your science lessons, we should be able to answer a lot of those questions. We're really looking forward to seeing you in September. And I can't wait for you to start science lessons and start enjoying doing science. Thank you ever so much and we'll see you soon. Bye now.